If the, the people who founded this town could see you guys now, they would say something in French, I guess. I wouldn't know what it was. <laughs> oh. The lobster officially is two months non-stop going hard and then 10 months off. Sort of like playing for the Toronto Maple Leafs. <laughs> When you grow up in a small town in Newfoundland, you see the people have a sense of humor about hard times. I turned that into a career and hit the road. Mr. Johnny Harris! Now I'm on a mission to find the funny in the places you'd least expect it. Canada's struggling small town. Towns that are against the ropes, but hanging in there. Still laughing in the face of adversity. Welcome to Surrey, PEI. The town's name might mean mouse en Francais, but it takes the heart of a lion just to get by here. And folks have been. Folks have been clinging stubbornly to this fishing village on PEI's east coast for almost two and a half centuries. Here we are in Surrey, PEI, one of the oldest towns in the country. People have been here for centuries. This was originally a little small French settlement. They had a mouse plague. There wasn't enough food, and the mice came out of the woods, literally. So many mice drowned in the river that it slowed down the boats. And this is where we got the name Sori, Mouse Town. I think if 40 years of mouse plagues didn't make your ancestors pack up and go somewhere else, <laughs> that says that this little corner of PEI is something special, I think. <laughs> Was it honestly 40 years before somebody decided to get a cat? <laughs> You know, in a little town like Surrey, it helps to have a big guy in your corner, a big guy fighting for you. And I think in this town, that big guy is Big Mac. Mayor Dave McDonald. <laughs> Mayor, what would you say the main exports of, of Surrey are? Uh, fish and potatoes, and young people. Surrey have trouble hanging on to young people? Oh, very or? much so. Well, see, there's no, no jobs. Is that right? Yeah. That's our white elephant right there. Ocean Choice PEI. Biggest fish processing plant on the island when it was going full board. Used to hire 300 people. And what is it doing now? Nothing. Mayor Mack explained to me that the decline in Surrey's traditional industries has hit the town just as hard as the plague it was named after. Some of these fishermen, these younger fishermen especially, when they're done with lobster fishing, they'll tie their boat up and they'll jump on an airplane and they'll go to Fort McMurray to work. The guys in the crab fishery go out, they can get their crab limit in a couple of weeks. So then they'll fly off to Alberta and, and work at Fort Mac. And out there you get your crab limit in no time. <laughs> see there is a determination here for people to still live off the water, off the land, in a traditional way of life. And you walk around looking for holes. There's holes, there's holes, holes. right there. I mean, where oh, yeah, 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 I see him, I see him, I see him. Yeah. So I went down with Jim Reggie and Art Peters to get some clams. In this day and age, where the fishery can avail of state-of-the-art equipment. You've got your, your, your depth finders and uh, sonars and GPS points. The most advanced equipment to hit the clam industry <laughs> is a toilet plunger. Those are genuine toilet plungers. <laughs> and now this one here is about probably 65 years old. This toilet plunger is going to start getting a pension next year. <laughs> These guys have been buddies for over 60 years. Jim told me that one time they got hammered on moonshine, stole a hearse, drove out to the national park. Two of us climbed into Anne's bed and flaked out. <laughs> Two climbed into where? Green Gables. Anne, Anne of Green Gables. And slept in Anne of Green Gables' bed. <laughs> Can you imagine what a crisis that would be today if they seen that? What do you got to do to get arrested in this town? <laughs> For that matter, what do you have to do to get a steady paycheck in this town? What's different about the fishery now in, in Surrey than it, than it was back when you guys started out? You know, there was clams every place a few years ago, not anymore. Yeah. What happened? 
fish no fruit. Fish. No fish now. The last two years I worked, I, I think I put more labor work than I ever did in my life. I was clamming, I was loading potato boats, I was helping farmers, and I was unloading crabs. <laughs> you seem fit as a fiddle there now. Yeah, I'm 29. Uh, I mean, why. you went at that hole yeah. better than I, and I'm, oh, I'm yeah. fit, let me tell you. <laughs> I finally got the hang of it. I'm plunging away. One of the clams, eventually, he just pops right up to the surface. It was easy. I could just grab him up, and I lifted him up. There you go. Yep. Oh, yeah, there you go. You're a real clam digger now. And he pissed on me. <laughs> Look, see that? A little bastard. <laughs> he pissed on He pissed all over me. So no, what no. kind of clams are these? Piss clams. Uh, excuse me, waiter, are the piss clams fresh? <laughs> are they fresh? Smell my plunger. <laughs> Two hours later, he was slathered in butter. I don't need to tell you who won that one. You did a good job of cooking them. Yeah. Though Art and Jim have sworn off the sauce long ago, they let me wash down the clams the traditional way, with moonshine. It's not great. I haven't had a drink for 34 years, but I can, I can tell you if the shine is good or not. That's 150 proof. You know, no, I can feel it in my hand. No, because you the feel the alcohol going into your hands. Try that. That's tasty, actually. That's a tasty drop. People have looked to the sea for as long as we've been on the planet. You relearn the appreciation for it. You can kind of hear the wind in the trees. You can hear the, the water lapping on the shore off in the distance. You know, you hear a seagull a little further in the distance. You can hear Jim and her plunges for piss clams. <laughs> Beautiful. It's interesting that Surrey is part of the only county in PEI with a declining population, because everyone I met is dying to stay here. I met all kinds of people reaching back to the past traditions for a new way of doing things. I went out with Johnny Flynn with the Colville Bay Oyster Company. These are traditional oyster tongs. Yeah. That have been used for centuries because it doesn't hurt the bottom. The secret to growing good oysters is a good oyster bottom. He said the most important thing to cultivating oysters is a good oyster bottom. So they get a deeper cup and a nicer shape. And if you don't have a good oyster bottom, you better hope you got nice oyster tits. <laughs> hey, how long have you been at this? right after the closure of the cod fishery. Oysters are here naturally, so we developed it into a small uh, small family business. And now the guy's famous, taking PEI's ocean-friendly tradition national. Well, they go right from the east coast to the west coast. 70 restaurants across the country, that's pretty impressive, right? An oyster empire, but it hasn't made him shellfish. What was it about Surrey that you would figure out a way to stay? It's a great place to raise a family. You don't have to worry about locking doors. The biggest thing you have to worry about, I guess, is making a living. We didn't stay here to be millionaires, right? We've all heard that oysters will make you feel amorous. <laughs> I don't know if it's the oyster, Johnny, but the way the evening sun is hitting your blue eyes right now is... Uh... OK, that's enough oysters for you. OK. I'm just saying you take care of yourself is all. It's not... I was with Johnny. I had four or five oysters, and then I was right in the mood for a clam. <laughs> I was nervous about telling that joke with Father Raju here. I thought I'd be... I thought I'd be struck by lightning. In a town so steeped in tradition, I figured I had to stop by the Catholic Church to meet Father Raju and Father Paul. So in a town that has had a plague of mice, <laughs> right. uh, potato blights, <laughs> uh, fires, it's very biblically in trouble. <laughs> do, do, how much is resting on your shoulders now? <laughs> Not a whole lot, thanks be to God. <laughs> no, I find the people here are absolutely delightful. Is it fair to say that people seem more invested in, in a traditional way of life than, say, monetary gain. Yeah, the people here farm, they fish. When you make a choice like that, you give up certain things. Father Raju has come from India to Surrey. <laughs> He's 
culture shock even the word for. God brings you on the plane and drops you onto the snowbank. <laughs> <laughs> I think most people in your scenario would have been on the phone with the Vatican pretty quick. Like, there's got to be sinners down in Florida. And this has been really something to be able to come to Surrey and be accepted by the people. They seem to be really very open-minded. Accept anyone. Yeah. They love you. Father Raju told me that before he came here, he couldn't even find Surrey on the map. I said, Father Raju, no worries. Most Canadians couldn't find Surrey on the map. <laughs> but that's what we're going to change right here tonight. I was able to go out with Captain Darren McKinnon. Darren is eighth generation. His people have been fishing these waters for 200 years. Holy cow, look at the claw on that one. Please. Holy freak, what a size. Lobster fishing is one of the most dangerous traditional jobs on the planet, let alone the island. This is a scary looking creature, right? Those big claws coming at you. It's got eyes bolted off its head, the prickly horns, antennas. Disgusting things that go like that. <laughs> I, I, I just don't know who was the first person to look at that creature and think, garlic butter. <laughs> but the trick with Darren is he has tourists come out with him for two months of the year. The lobster fishing usually just pays the bills. You know, with a young family, I don't want to travel west, uh, so I decided about four years ago to, to start experiential tourism. That's brilliant. Uh, Darren told me he got a, a, a lot of American tourists. And they pay money to, to have a, an experience as a, as a real lobster fisherman. Darren can deal with the American tourists just fine, because he's got four kids. So he's used to ignoring stupid questions and saying, don't touch that. Did you ever see a lobster go to sleep? Just keep stroking them. I've, I've been put to sleep like that. At first, I was nervous. I'm a Newfoundlander, but I've been in Toronto for a while now. But I must say, the rhythm of it felt oddly familiar. Uh, there you go. I hope that helped. Take your time and leave whenever you're ready. The lobster fishery is two months non-stop going hard and then 10 months off. Sort of like playing for the Toronto Maple Leafs. <laughs> Ending you're gonna see. For a change of pace, I went and visited Terry Hall at the Sea Glass Creations place. Sea glass is glass that has been thrown in the water, um, usually off the ships during prohibition. PI was great for rum running. There has been numerous shipwrecks. She reminded me that, you know. People have looked to the sea as a, an inspiration for peace and tranquility for as long as we've been on the planet. I was a probation officer for 23 years, and I would walk the beach as a way of relaxing. And I got into the habit of collecting sea glass. And I knew I had to leave my work. Um, I was burning out, and I thought, what am I going to do? Yeah. So I put my hands in my pocket, and I had all this glass. Terry took the glass and the message the sea gave her. Now she sells beautiful things made out of free stuff from the beach. I wonder what she could make of, say, me. You are more than your physical body. There's an energetic system, which is called the chakra. Can you tell I'm an <laughs> asshole from my <laughs> terrible chakras? Terry teaches kundalini yoga. We tried some meditation. How many chakras do you have? Seven, and then your eight is your aura. So what am I thinking about or trying not to think about? You just want to make sure that your spine's erect. Erect spine. The thing about meditation is that... You're losing me already. <laughs> she was telling me that it's very important for me to quiet my body so that I can be alone with my thoughts. I thought it was going to be easy, trying to not think about anything. <laughs> and then that's when you think of yes. everything. What you're going to be chanting is Satnam. I think I got a Satnam in my new SUV. <laughs> Sorry. See Don't you. apologize. Oh, I, 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 it trouble me. turning it off. I said, Terry, the worst place for any comedian is to be alone with their thoughts. It's just a whirlwind of dirty limericks and fart jokes. Sad. Terry was 
was trying to show me a way that I could access my inner happiness without moonshine. And you just sit here and do that for 20 minutes. If we didn't have a biting wind off the cold North Atlantic, it might be a little easier. Yes. Well, if we had a big blanket around us. That'd be all right. And a fire. And marshmallows. And... Yes. And to tell you the truth, I wasn't hating the moonshine. <laughs> you know the old nursery rhyme about the three blind mice? <laughs> Those mice are from Surrey. <laughs> and you know how they became blind kids? <laughs> moonshine. I went and had a chat with Ken Mills, the myriad moonshine makers. Have you ever smelled 90% alcohol? No, but I would like to. Holy. <laughs> PEI had prohibition longer than anyone else in Canada. 47 years on an island without booze. It's like a cruel joke. To get a drink, you had to make it at home. What you wanted to do was not allow your neighbor to know that you were making the shine. So you had to try to find stuff that was already being consumed by the farm or right. the house yeah, yeah, in yeah. order to do so. You needed molasses, you needed sugar, and you needed lots of it. <laughs> it must have got awkward after a while when people kept going back to the store, saying to the store clerk, yeah, oh, I was just, uh, you know, I was just in the mood to make uh, two, three hundred pounds of cookies. <laughs> I'm really happy to be here. I'm really happy to have you here. I'm also feeling a little weak in the knees. Just lean against the barrel, that's why we got them. Surrey is the place where necessity has long been the mother of invention, with Moonshine being her bastard son. Funny enough, it was an outsider, the town doctor, who came up with a plan. Like most rural communities, we had a hard time keeping our, our rural doctors. The doctor had moved into the community, and we made sure we took him to every party. We were at a party one night, and, Psst, Doc, you want to smash a shine? He said, why isn't someone doing this legally? And here you are. Yeah. I think if the, the people who founded this town hundreds of years ago could see you guys now, they would say something in French, I guess. I wouldn't know what it was. It was really French people, right? <laughs> but it's pretty impressive. I was about to throw down with a local fiddling legend with a fishing tail so tall you couldn't make it up. I must have still been feeling the moonshine when I went and met a guy who gave up fame and fortune for fish and family. J.J. Chasen, the fiddling fisherman. I made a conscious decision that I wanted to make Surrey my home. I had offers to go to uh, Berkeley College of Music. I had a scholarship to go there. I passed it up. I couldn't believe it. I, I started thinking maybe tradition here is like an anchor. It's hard to tell if it's keeping you in place or holding you back. Six generations of fiddlers in this guy's family. In fact, I think it was one of his ancestors that played the mice out of Surrey. <laughs> like the Pied Piper, right, only with a fiddle. All the mice got in sets of four and square danced out of the... Out of the 52 first cousins, yeah. everybody plays or sings or dances. We all had the same opportunities. He's got 52 first cousins. Not very good if you need a lot of attention. Really good if you need a kidney. <laughs> My mom tells us that whenever I was a kid, I'd break the fiddle out, and I'd go in and sit in the toilet <laughs> because the acoustics in the bathroom were, were so great. Which is funny, because sometimes when I'm on stage performing for people, I like to close my eyes and pretend I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> See, same thing, only different. The difference being that JJ turned the maritime stereotype on its head. Instead of leaving the seas for opportunities, he picked up fishing as a way to stay. I mean, hindsight, I think I made the right decision because I live in Surrey with my family and that's what my goal was all along. the tradition of tenacity began in Surrey. Maybe it was the mice. You guys have done whatever it takes to stay on the island 300 years, living off the land, living off the sea. Mayor Mack came back from Montreal to raise a family here. J.J. Chasen turned down a, a musical scholarship 
so he could raise his family here. Johnny Flynn took a sidestep from uh, fishery to aquaculture so he could raise his family here. Darren McKinnon figured out a way he could get tourists to pay him to do his job <laughs> so that he could stay here. Listen, so, folks, if there's one thing I'll take from my visit to Surrey is people want to stay here in Surrey. If you packed up and went away, you wouldn't be from here. <laughs> and if you weren't from here, you'd be from away. <laughs> right, before, uh, right before I came over to the show hall, my mom called me for the first time since I got to PEI. She said, uh, Jonathan, uh, how is the place? I said, Mom, it's great. I hauled lobster, raked oysters, plunged piss clams, drank moonshine, aligned my chakras, and was in bed by 8 p.m. <laughs> She said, what are you talking about? I said, Mom, I'm talking about Surrey, Prince Edward Island. You guys have been great. Can't beat a small town in comedy. It's really wonderful. A lot of laughter I enjoyed. It was a great show. Yeah. I was well impressed. I think he's got a pretty good handle on what makes us tick. <laughs> it was really good for a community. I had my dinner, I think, after laughing, 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 I need, I think. And another dinner. I would like to see y'all come back sometime when you're not working.